We can safely say that all people strive to bring about happiness in their life in one way or another. And among the many things that people usually desire to have because they tend to produce a feeling of security and satisfaction are a successful marriage, enough money to spend for their needs, healthy body and sound mind, fulfillment in one's work or career, and among many others. But it is an undeniable truth that so many today lack in those so-called good things in life. And this causes them to express a feeling of anxiety since they view them as the main source, the main source of their happiness and contentment in life. But if we consult the Holy Scriptures, Brother Edwell, what does it teach or what does the Bible teach regarding genuine happiness and contentment? Well, we can take the example of the Apostle Paul. And friends, we can read what he said here in the book of Philippians. I'm going to read to you chapter 4, the verses 12. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. To the true servants of the Lord God, for example, the Apostle Paul, well, contentment does not depend on the circumstances surrounding them. Because if you notice, the Apostle Paul had learned to be content not only when he had enough, but also when he was in need. In fact, despite having gone through severe trials, sufferings, and tribulations, he neither despaired nor felt distressed. Yes. Now, Brad, what wisdom does Apostle Paul teach us with regards to his conviction or with regards to his feeling of contentment in life, in whatever situation he found himself in. Well, there's a very basic truth that he reminds everyone. And friends, we can read about that here in the book of 1 Timothy. I'm going to read to you chapter 6. The verses are 7 down to 8. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. While, of course, it is natural for us to seek contentment, however, if you noticed, we must also bear in mind that when we came into this world, we actually didn't have anything with us. And when we bid farewell to our present life, based again on what the Apostle Paul said, we won't be bringing anything with us either. But our friends may ask, what then was the source of Apostle Paul's contentment in life? Well, basing it on his other statements, his contentment, his happiness was based on spiritual fulfillment, not material things. And uh, what good will it bring if we seek or if we find our contentment, our happiness in spiritual things or in the words of our Lord God? Well, we'll be like the Apostle Paul, of course. Mm -hmm. If a person is content because of spiritual things, then mm -hmm. he'll learn to be happy no matter what condition surrounds him. Or even if we lack in the so-called good things in life. Yes. But, Brad, why is there no reason for any of us to feel discontent if we do not get the things, the material things we mean that we want? Well, to answer that question, let's now turn to what the, the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. himself taught all of us. And friends, we can read what he said here in the book of Luke. I'm going to read to you chapter 12, and the verse is verse 15. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Friends, there's no reason for us to feel discontent when we do not get the things we want. Because if you notice, based on what the Lord Jesus Christ said, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. This really means that contentment and happiness does not really depend on life situations or life's conditions or circumstances. Yes, it doesn't depend on whether you are now uh, you are suffering from mm -hmm. scarcity or you have enough. It basically depends on how you deal with the situation, on how you feel towards that situation or how you look at the situation. In other words, we need to learn the right attitude towards a given situation. That's right. But in order for us to do so, for us to be able to learn the right attitude, in the situations in life, what should we recognize? Well, we need to recognize the true source of happiness mm -hmm. because unless we do that, 
even though we may have more than enough, mm -hmm. we'll never really be happy. We'll always suffer. We'll always feel discontent. Indeed, that is true, Edel. But we're sure our fans are asking this question. In whom then must we find our contentment and happiness? Well, the Bible teaches that we should find our happiness, our, our content in the Lord God himself. And friends, we can read that here in the book of Psalms. I'm going to read to you here in chapter 37. The verse is verse 4. Seek your happiness in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Friends, the one speaking to us in the verse we just read is King David. And what does King David teach all of us? Well, based on what he said, we should find our contentment, our happiness in the Lord God. And the Lord God's promise to those who do so, if they seek their happiness in him, is that he will give them their heart's desire. Think about that, dear friends. The Lord God will let such people experience his great goodness. We would like to point out to our friends and viewers that if David, who was a great king, a triumphant king, we, we know that, he sought his happiness and contentment in the Lord God, then there's no reason for any of us to decline his invitation to also seek and find happiness in our Lord God. That's correct. Now, for us to be able to experience God's goodness in our life, what quality must we possess? Well, the same quality possessed by King David. He trusted in the Lord God. So, dear friends, it's the same with us. We should also trust, truly trust in the Lord God. Let's read about that, dear friends, here in the book of Psalms 27, the verse is 13. Even if a whole army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust God. Friends, if we truly desire to experience the Lord God's goodness in this life, well, it's necessary for all of us, of course, to place our trust in the true Lord God. But why are we certain that we will experience God's goodness in our life if we place our trust and hope in our Lord God? Well, to answer that question, we now turn again to the testimony of the Apostle Paul. And we can read what he said, dear friends, here in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, the verse is 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Friends, the Apostle Paul underscores the truth that the Lord God truly is our great provider. So, true servants of the Lord God can certainly expect him, the true Lord God, to provide them all the good things they need in this life. Now let us turn to our Lord Jesus Christ. How did the Lord Jesus Christ illustrate how the Father, the true Lord God, would not and could not stand seeing His servants lacking in the things they need in this life? Well, that's very important. We need to answer that, of course. And friends, what we're going to do is read from the book of Matthew, chapter 6. The verse is 26. Here is what the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to say. Look at the birds. They do not plant seeds, gather a harvest, and put it in barns. Yet, your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth much more than birds? There's no reason for any of the true Lord God's true servants to doubt the wonderful things that the Lord God can do for them. And why is that, dear friends? Well, because based on what the Lord Jesus Christ said, if the birds that do not plant, do not gather, are cared for and fed by the Father then all the more will our Father in heaven take care of His faithful servants. So we should contemplate on the power and goodness of our Lord God to provide our needs rather than expect to find true satisfaction from the material things, the things of this world. Yes, but sadly those who expect so much from this world are often those people who also fail to distinguish between their wants and their needs. But if we consult the Holy Scriptures, do we truly need just about anything we want? Well, let's read the answer to that from the book of Proverbs. Dear friends, I'm going to read to you chapter 30, and the verse is verse 8. Give me the things I need each day. If I have more than I need, then I will think I don't need you. But if I am poor, then I might steal. Then I will bring shame to the name of God. Based on what we just read, dear friends, we don't truly need just about anything that we want. Rather, we need only enough to live. For this reason, what should we ask from the Lord God to provide us with? Well, we should ask the Lord God to give us the things we need each day. So to be truly happy, to be truly content, 
we should not focus on the things we don't have. That's Rather, right. we should focus on the things that we already received from the Lord God. In other words, we should count the Lord God's blessings in our life. Yes. Now, what good will it bring if you do that? Well, friends, it's very important that we understand this. We will discover that the Lord God's blessings, they really outnumber the so-called misfortunes, those things that bring discontentment to others. The blessings from the Lord God outnumber those. So the things we crave to have, but we don't, they pale in comparison to the things we already receive from the Lord God. Indeed, that is true, Brother Edel. And as a matter of fact, dear friends, with this life itself that we have now, what great blessing has the Lord God already given us? Well, before we continue with our discussion, let's watch first how Sister Melanie Brookhart of Fresno, California found contentment and happiness in life. I am Sister Melanie Brookhart and I'm from the locale of Fresno, California. I've been a member um, almost three years. I was baptized in January of the year 2000. I was raised in the Congregationalist Church. I was a Presbyterian, but then when um, my grandmother moved out here, she was a practicing Catholic, and then I converted to Catholicism when I was 18, and we fell away from the church, and then I just searched, and I found the Church of Christ. The Sister Glenda, she invited me. I invited her once, and she said, yes, I will come. When the Bible study date comes in, she doesn't come. So I wait a little bit, and then I'll start inviting her again. Next year, she invited me a couple more times, and I tried to go those two times. I called her at that time, and she said, yes, I come. And then when I went, it was just, everybody was so family-oriented. It was really uh, I felt like I was home. I really saw, first of all, was that they came from the Bible. It wasn't what Brother uh, Ray was saying or um, Brother Johnny or any of those that were at the time I first started. And everything just was so factual. Since joining the church, I have become more aware of where I need to work on. I can let God send me where He needs to. I can let God give me the um, words to say to people. And my husband, I finally got him coming and hopefully he'll be baptized soon. But my daughter and my son I'm still working on now that I have the church and God is in my life. I can be the example for them and they come over and we pray and so that's a step forward even though it hurts me that I can't bring them right in <laughs> I know that in God's own time I have to stop and think it took you three years to get even into the church you know sister Glenda worked three years to get me to come <laughs> so it's just the staying power and knowing that in God's time it will happen I think if they're still skeptical, it would not hurt to listen to the Bible studies. The Bible studies can answer a lot of questions, and they should ask their questions. Because that I didn't say before, but that was one of the things that I think both my husband and I are very impressed with. You can ask questions and they give you an honest answer. If someone is still struggling with not wanting to hear the message, maybe they um, need to just read some of the more of the magazines and, and get some more of the insights. It can't hurt you to go just to the Bible studies and ask questions. With me, it was timing. I did try a couple of times. I, I bless Sister Glenda all the time that she stuck in there. <laughs> I think the peace of mind is the fact that I am not having to worry about what's happening. There's someone else that is looking out for me. I am not alone. God's up there. He's, he's got it all in control. He knows what's going to happen. I just have to kind of pay attention <laughs> and listen to him.
It is clearly evident, Brad, Edel, in the feature we watched uh, that Sister Melanie really found contentment and happiness in obedience to the words and commandments of our Lord God. And that is exactly what she shared to her own family. Yes, and not only our sister, of course, but so many other members of the church. We want to share the peace of mind that mm -hmm. we now enjoy, the contentment, the happiness that comes from not just knowing and understanding, but also obeying the will, the commandments of the Lord God recorded in the Holy Scriptures. And of course, through obedience to God's teachings and commands, we will surely be able to experience God's graces and goodness in our life. That's correct. And th that leads us back to the question we left a while back. With this life itself that we have now, what blessing has the Lord God already given us? Well, to answer that question, dear friends, we now turn to the book of Psalms. I'm going to read to you chapter 95. The verses we're going to read are verses 6 down to 7. Come. Let us bow down and worship Him. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. He is our God. We are the people He cares for, the flock for which He provides. Friends, with this life given to us by the true Lord God, well, what great blessing has He already given us? Well, based on what we just read, the opportunity to serve, to worship the one who created all of us. That is indeed a great blessing from the Almighty God. Yes. It is because among all of his creation here on earth, only we human beings have been given the chance by the Lord God to render worship and services to him. Yes, and that is why we should take advantage of the opportunity being given to us. Indeed. But of course, we need to make sure that the worship we're offering him is based on his commandments, that it's acceptable in his sight so that it will bring glory to him and we will have lived up to what He expects of us. And as the provider and the sustainer of our life, the Lord God Almighty, what else does the Lord God give us? For example, in this earth that we dwell, what blessing do we receive from our Almighty God? Well, again, we turn back to the book of Psalms to answer that question. Dear friends, here in Psalms 104, the verses are 13 down to 14. He waters the hills from His upper chambers, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth. Friends, the Lord God makes rain fall on the earth not only to give humans and animals something to drink, but also to cause plants and crops to grow and abound. And of course, the result of that is the earth is going to bring forth food for all of us to eat and to enjoy. So the Lord God really wants all of us to be filled with happiness. Yes. But aside from this, what else proves that the Lord God, our Father in heaven, really wants men to be filled with happiness and enjoyment? Well, we can read of something else that the Lord God gave man mm -hmm. to give all of us happiness and contentment. Dear friends, I'm going to read to you from the book of Proverbs this time. Here in chapter 27, the verse is 9. Ointment and perfume delight the heart, and the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Another source of happiness is the company of good friends. We know you'll agree with that, dear friends. Because isn't it true that when one is sad, a loyal and trusted friend can console, can give that person strength, strength that will provide him with hope and happiness? And friends, we ask you, isn't it also true that a friend who can be relied on, especially in times of trouble, such a friend brings cheer to someone with a broken heart. Aside from this, what else is another source of man's happiness provided by the Lord God? Again, the Bible tells us, dear friends, here in the book of Proverbs, I'm going to read to you Proverbs chapter 2, the verse is 10. You will become wise and your knowledge will give you pleasure. Friends, another source of man's happiness given by the Lord God is the possession of knowledge or the possession of wisdom. But how can man's knowledge bring man happiness? Well, we all know that a person finds delight in learning to do something well. And not only that, because it also helps a person achieve what he aspires for. Now, aside from knowledge, company of good friends, food and drinks, what else does the Lord God give to man uh, which is another proof, another proof that the Lord God really wants men to be filled with happiness and enjoyment. A good spouse. And we can read about that, dear friends, here in the book of Proverbs once again. Let me read to you chapter 5, the verse is 18. 
So be happy with your wife and find your joy with the girl you married. Friends, a good spouse, a good partner in life is also, we know, a source of happiness. And this is the reason the Lord God instituted marriage. It's for man's welfare and happiness. So all these things prove that the true Lord God, He really wants man to be happy, to be content in this life. But others may argue and ask if it is true that the Lord God really wants man to be filled with happiness and enjoyment in this life, then why is it that so many today are suffering from various problems in this life? And why is it that so many today are in a desperate condition or in a pitiful condition? Well, it's not because of God's fault, no. Because the Lord God, He did not go back on His word. Mm -hmm. In fact, He fulfilled what He promised to mankind, to all that He created. He what provided then? for our happiness, our contentment. Mm -hmm. And what then is the reason, Brother Edo? Well, it's because man abused what the Lord God gave to us for our happiness. Now, in order to avoid any thinking that we are just presenting our personal opinion in this program, can we cite proof from that from the Holy Scriptures? For example, food and drinks. Well, let's read about that, dear friends. From the book of Luke, I'm going to read to you chapter 21. The verses are 34 down to 35. Be careful not to let yourselves become occupied with too much feasting and drinking and with the worries of this life, or that day may suddenly catch you like a trap, for it will come upon all people everywhere on earth. Friends, we all know that the Lord God has given us food, but we also know, and based on what we just read, there are those who have fallen into excessive eating, into feasting, as well as drunkenness. And we all know, of course, that because of that, people do suffer. Now, how about the desire to have wealth? What is one example of the Holy Scriptures of improper way of searching for wealth or uplifting one's life? Well, the Apostle Paul has something to say about that in the book of 1 Timothy. Dear friends, I'm going to read to you chapter 6, and the verse is verse 10. For the love of money is a source of all kinds of evil. Some have been so eager to have it that they have wandered away from the fate and have broken their hearts with many sorrows. Success, as well as wealth, are not by themselves evil, dear friends. What is evil is that if these things would cause someone to become separated from the Lord God, or to lose his faith in the true Lord God. So, man should not place his hope, his trust in material wealth, so as not to ruin his relationship with the Lord God. That's what we can learn from what we just read. And since the Lord God really wants man to be filled with happiness, how then, our friends may ask, how then can one enjoy genuine happiness? How does the Bible describe the concept of genuine happiness and contentment? That is a very important question, and we know that so many of our friends want to partake of that genuine happiness Indeed. and contentment. So, dear friends, please listen to this. Here in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, the verse is 11. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. The Bible once again teaches us, dear friends, the Lord God, He is the only source of genuine and complete happiness. In fact, without the Lord God in one's life, a person will not have real joy. He will not enjoy real happiness. So we really ought to make the Lord God the ultimate source of our delight or happiness. Yes. Now specifically, how do the genuine servants of our Lord God find happiness in the Almighty Father? Well, again, we turn to what the Bible teaches here in the book of Psalms, dear friends. Here in chapter 63, the verses are 1 down to 5. God, you are my God and I long for you. My whole being desires you. Like a dry, worn out, and waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. Let me see you in the sanctuary. Let me see how mighty and glorious you are. Your constant love is better than life itself. And so I will praise you. I will give you thanks as long as I live. I will raise my hands to you in prayer. My soul will feast and be satisfied, and I will sing glad songs of praise to you. Friends, the happiness of true servants of the Lord God is in serving the true Lord God. And this is the reason they seek the Lord God earnestly in the sanctuary or in the house of worship. A true servant of the Lord God desires to feel the power 
to see the glory of the Lord God in this way, such a servant finds happiness. He finds satisfaction for his soul. And that is what we want our friends to partake. That is why, despite the many hardships, despite the many sacrifices which the servants of our Lord God have to go through in this life, well, they never fail to worship the Lord God. Instead, they strive to fulfill this divine duty because they know, they know that by doing so, they can please the Lord God and in return, it brings them joy and satisfaction. Beloved friends, may all of us seek our happiness in serving the Lord God. May all of us be joined together in finding our delight in obeying God's teachings and commandments, one of which is to be included among His true servants in these last days. And let us always remember that by doing so, we will surely be able to achieve and secure genuine happiness and contentment in our life or whatever situation in life we may be. Friends, join us now in a short prayer. Our most gracious and loving Father in heaven. Yes, Father. From the bottom of our hearts, we offer you our praises and thanksgivings, O God. Yes, Father. For giving us this blessed chance once again yes, Lord. to be enlightened by means of your teachings and your commands yes, recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. May you please bless our friends and viewers. Yes, Father. Please bless our hearts and souls yes, Father. so that we may all be joined together in finding our delight and contentment Father. in obeying all your teachings and your commandments, yes, one of which is to strive or to do all we possibly can to be included among your true servants in these last days. Amen. Lord Jesus, never shall we forget to pray unto you. Yes, Lord. It is because you are the head of this church. Yes, Lord. You are our Lord and mediator to the Father. Yes, Lord. May you please once again speak to him in our behalf yes, Lord. and forgive us for all our sins and shortcomings. Amen. Father, as we return to you in prayer, we ask for all these graces and blessings yes, Father. only through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.